And as we move into the next enlightenment state, getting into more classical enlightenment here, what I call the transcended awakening, it says your soul exists in space and time, but who were you before the Big Bang, which gave birth to space and time? So we have a sense of something in us enduring in space and time, or in time indefinitely, i.e. the soul. And now we're starting to get a sense of something that's aware of the soul, that's outside of time, that's not identified with the individual, that's looking through the individual. Mm. Modern science tells us that space and time had a beginning and that something came from nothing, but there was a part of you that was there to witness that beginning. And you can discover that part of yourself, your transcendent self, the eternal immortal witness that is beyond space and time. It was never born and therefore will never die. This is who you really are, pure peace beyond understanding. And you can know it through direct experience. That's identity, right? We, we talked about the ways to understand this, and all of them can change your life, but the amplitude of that grows with each way. We can intellectually know it. Right now I'm pointing at it. I'm, I'm intellectually pointing at it. I'm, I'm logically kind of trying to uh, construct this and point to this. And we can know it in that way. You go, oh, God, that makes sense. Oh, my God, that makes sense. Oh, my God, Sorry, right? Mm -hmm. You can have that kind of feeling just from the... The, 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 uh, the rational understanding and then you can also intuit it on a deeper level than the intellect or the rational or the logic points at it. It's, it's, it's this whole body felt this is truth. I'm getting chills in every cell of my, this is truth. Intuitively truth. I don't need it explained to me. This is truth. And you can feel that intuitively. That's the second way you can know it. But the third way you can know it is in identity. That's experiential. That's I and the Father are one. Not I understand that I and the Father are one. It's I and the, I and the Father are one in identity. And that's a whole different game changer. And that's why even just understanding this, just understanding this, pushing in and understanding this, even rationally, intellectually, it's cranking energy up into the part of the brain that can help it crack into identity as we keep moving forward and doing the meditation and working with this. And so you can have a, you can have a profound redirection of life just from the understanding. It's like, an aha of holy crap this simply has to be true because nothing else makes sense without it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right I'm gonna hold questions I'm gonna go through all of this and then I'll come back and a a answer questions <laughs> and so the transcended awakening doesn't just help us know a part of us that will go on forever in time, it radically liberates us from the world of space and time. We are able to find that kingdom within that never enters into stream, into space or time, and find that as our ultimate self, our transcendent self, our self-absolute. The thing that's most real and most enduring as everything else changes, that I am remains unchanged. And there's a felt sense of that being transcended to all of the world of form. And that's moksha, that's complete liberation. Because, not, because if you have a relationship to that, there's absolutely nothing that can hurt you. That can't suffer because it's aware of suffering. And if you say, I am suffering, you say, find out who the I is that's suffering. Mm -hmm. Because that is not suffering, that's aware of the suffering. 
and you realize that part of you is fundamentally free. And that changes everything.